Welcome everyone! So, today the Mage Tower was up, and I decided I've not done that yet. I should go have a look at it. How did that go for me? Like this. All around me are familiar faces Worn out places Worn out faces Bright and early for their daily races Going nowhere, going nowhere So by now, I think you could say, I'm somewhat of an expert on the Mage Tower. So, this is going to be a guide as to not do what I did. Alright, let's start with your gear. Typically, for Mage Tower challenges, you're expected to be over 900 item level, perhaps with a 2 or a 4 set bonus from the Tomb of Sargeras. If I were a good mage, I would have been able to do this before the Tomb of Sargeras came out, but I'm not, so we're gonna rock with this. I'm looking for survivability. I'm a mage, I wear cloth, I'm squishy. So I'll be rocking Pridas, the neck piece for the extra shield it gives me, and Bellevue's stem because I'll be taking Shimmer, and two charges of Blink means I get two shields. Simple enough. Of the two talent builds, I'm most familiar with the single target one, so that is what I ended up using. I did try, for the longest time, using the AoE build, and it just didn't quite have the right oomph for me, and it could never get all the way down with it. But then I swapped over to the single target, and then I got it on my second try. On screen now is the AoE talent build that I used first up. In the first row, we have Amplification. Amplification increases the amount of damage that the Arcane Missiles do based on how many Arcane Charges you have. In the second row, we have I've taken Shimmer because I've got Bellevue's Final Stand chest piece, meaning I can get two shields with it. Although, if you're after other forms of movement, go Slipstream. But if you have neither Pridaz nor Bellevue's, Mana Shield is the way to go. Since this is a movement intensive fight, Rune of Power should not be taken here under any circumstance. Encounter's Flow is a reasonable one, although I did play around with Mirror Image for when I needed On Demand Burst. Since this is AoE, you will be casting Arcane Barrage a lot, so take Resonance, Resonance will make your Arcane Barrage do more damage the more Arcane Barrages hit. So when you hit three targets, which there are in this fight, they will do more damage. Chrono Shift is what you take regardless, simply because you'll be Arcane Barraging even in single target build, and it works as both slow and speed boost for yourself. Erosion, in the level 90 range, is just too good of a talent to not take, as what much as you may want to take Unstable Manage or Nether Tempest, you will be putting out a lot of damage on them, and Erosion will stay up, it's a basic buff to all things. Arcane Orb is, for, is in your final row. Arcane Orb you use to regain uh, Arcane Charges when you've dumped them with Arcane Barrage, as well as to do as much damage as you can. If you can line it up, it's perfect. Now, single target. The single target build is what I'm more familiar with, and so this, and because it's very, very similar to what I use for raiding. 
In level 15, we're going to take Arcane Familiar. Now, I could have taken Amplification, but because I'm not taking Slipstream, I don't know how, whether or not I'll be able to finish a cast of it, so I took Arcane Familiar. Arcane Familiar will do some very small damage, but it also gives me more mana regen and more, and more mana with which I can use in my burst window. Again, Shimmer because of the chest piece, and Counters Flow because I don't want to have to think about things. Level 60, take Supernova. Supernova gives you another spell with which to use to do some on-demand damage. Useful for getting down the guy's shield. It also works well to knock the enemies that are following you up into the air to give you just that little bit of a second to get away from them. Chrono Shift, because Arcane Barrage, slow plus movement speed is good for picking up runes. Erosion, again, because why else would you pick anything? Overpowered, because you are going to just stand still and you are going to tunnel the shit out of one of those characters. And you are going to do so much more damage with Overpowered than you will with those other ones. So with gear and talents out of the way, let's start and then we'll talk strategy. Safe travel. Outsider, Sigrun has stormed the Horse of Valor, determined to confront Odin. In her blind rage, she races headlong to her doom. Your Kir and Tor have found the means to convey you into Odin's halls. Hurry, Sigrun must be made to see reason before it is too late. The fate of the tides gone rests in your hands. Gods be with you, outsider. Go with honor, friend. You will want to remember to flask up, food up, and if you can afford it, throw on an augment rune just for that little bit of extra DPS. For this, everything counts. Now, I'll show you the opening that I used when I was using both the AoE build and then again for the actual killing video, which was with the single target build. You can actually take advantage of the RP time before the boss starts by actually eating to eat and get your stuff going whilst she's doing her RP. Kill some time. You want to position yourself between the three, behind Sigrun, and between the Jarl and the Runeseer. What you're going to do when she becomes available, and you'll see what I did here is pre-pot, activate all of my trinkets, activate Alineth, my artifact weapon, and then go Arcane Power, and then just spam Arcane Explosion. Arcane Explosion, you will be hitting all three targets, and you will then be able to do as much damage as possible. I think the best I got it down to was about 80% before the first fight, and then we'll get onto it from there. At this point, you may have done, as I have forgotten, to set Sigrun as a focus for a focus polymorph macro, which I will provide to you shortly. For the, ma for the macro, just follow on screen. Once you have finished your spam, Sigrun will do her first of the charges. Because she, you're so close to the entrance, you won't get knocked back very far. Make sure you use your ice nova here, and it'll root the Jarl in place and you can blink out. That way he'll be frozen for about the first 4-5 seconds of his charge, and he'll take his sweet time getting to you. Be very mindful of that raised bit in the center. It looks plays up with blink a lot. Sometimes it'll work just fine, sometimes it'll blink you to the edge of it and stop you. So you want to try and blink around it as best possible, just so that you can avoid that. Don't forget to use slow on the on the aisle so he doesn't catch up with you. There's a mouse over macro that you can pick up, and this will just hover your cursor over him, press slow, and that'll make him, and that'll make him slower while you run around. Arcane Barrage to dump your Arcane Charges, but also to gain um, Chrono Shift, which will slow them and speed you up. You need those, and you'll run over the runes put out by the Rune Seer. 
After the first set of runes, Sigrun will go into her blood phase and start to spam AoE. Polymorph her. Eventually the R will just stop, stand still and throw axes around. These are annoying, but they don't do too much damage and they're reasonably easy to avoid. Not that that stopped me getting hit by them just about every time. You will want to swap to the rune seal and he casts Ancestral Knowledge. That'll put a shield on himself. That's 6 million health you need to break through before you can interrupt him. If that cast goes off, well you saw my montage at the beginning of the video, you die. Periodically throughout the fight, Valkyr of Odin will drop down and leave a little golden orb. If you run over these orbs, they'll restore health. Note that Sigrun loves to th put fell pools underneath those, so try to get them before the pools show up. And don't think you can just sit around and let them pool up, because I did, they despawn and then you're left without healing, and it sucks, and you die. Throughout the fight, Sigrun will also summon these, a line of Valkyr. Now these are very similar to the uh, mechanic in Vault of the Wardens that Cordana summons up, however these are much, much quicker than they are. What you need to do is quickly identify where the gap in the line is, and blink over to it or just position yourself so. If you can't, you can either Greater Invis for the 60% damage reduction, or you can Ice Block it. Remember, if any mechanic here messes up, you can Ice Block. Also worthy of note, something that I found out accidentally, and it happened repeatedly afterwards, is that while Sigrun's Charge cannot knock you backwards through the ring you're in, you can blink through it. However, blinking through the ring will cause the boss to despawn. Not reset, not pop back, just flat out despawn. That's another hundred nether shards it will take for you to get back in. Completely wasted. However, if you do manage to reset the boss before actually dying, you get to keep whatever food buffs you had up beforehand, meaning it saves you a costly repair or, and having to reflask, repot, rerune, eat again. Remember that 65 wipes thing from my DBN counter? Over half of that is either deliberate or accidental resets. The single target strat is decidedly easier and I think more effective than the AoE strat. So when you first walk in, flask up, rune up, food up, get all your buffs ready, pre-pot, and pull Sigrun. Before you do anything else, use your polymorph on Sigrun. That'll leave her polymorph for the next 20 seconds. What we're going to do is entirely single target the rune seer, Alyoneth, any trinkets you've got, arcane power, and just burn, 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 burn it all. Beyond the opener, it's pretty much the same strat as before. Slow the all. Use your ice nova to keep him in place when he goes for his charge. Polymorph Sigrun.
ancestors! What you'll notice I've done in this fight is that I, even when I've broken the Rune Seer's shield, I try and leave it as late as possible before I actually interrupt. The reason for this is, whilst he's channeling that, he's not casting the stupid shadow things, which means he's not doing damage. And the other two, between my two legendaries, don't really do that much damage, and it's much more manageable that way. So now that you know how these two things are done, the two st different strategies, I'm just going to let my kill video play out. I'll see you at the end of the video. I draw upon the power of my ancestors! Beware. Beware. I draw upon the power of my ancestors! Beware. I draw upon the power of my ancestors! Ancestors! Beware! I draw upon Beware. the 
Beware. the corruption, Sikrin. You have the strength. But, Mother, I must avenge your death. Vengeance will not bring her back, Sikrin. Your people require a leader. If you fail, the Tidescorn are doomed. No, the fell will not take me. It will not! Forgive me, here. Hail, outsider. I will not falter. Wondrous say ye. I come to humbly beg your forgiveness for what I've done. I will accept whatever punishment you deem just. I am pleased to see you returned. My judgment is this. You are to assume the burden of the crown. You must become God Queen. What? Surely after the mistakes I've made, I am unfit to rule our people. You possess the strength and will. To overcome the fell, something no Vrykul before you has ever done. I know now that my visions were true. You are destined to unite the Tide Scorn against the Legion. Can you set aside your misgivings and do what is needed for your people? I. I will. If it takes my last breath. I will unite the tide scorn once more, so that we may drive the Legion from this land. It is done. Rise, Sigrid. I name you God Queen of the Tide Scorn. It seems you were right, outsider. Thank you for helping me find my path. My shield is ready. Fight with honor, outsider. Dan and the Legion must be stopped. Farewell, my friend, until we meet again. 
without you. Hail, and well met, champion. Where you lead, we will follow. Trust in yourself, champion. Alright, and that's the end of the video. Thank you for sticking around this long. If you liked it, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to read it. I don't really get that many. It's not hard to keep track of. Also, while you're here, take a look at my other videos and see what you think.